Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh May all the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of us Let's praise our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For the incredible power and mercy that he has bestowed upon us Besides that, today as you can see, I wa we have the structure of the skin And as we always do, I want us today again delve, dive and navigate through the structure of the skin the structure of the skin as well as the functions of the skin then we call it a topic in a quick manner to save time and also to expound further on details that are essential in this particular structure now let's look at the structure of the skin and the composition and its composition from where then we narrow down to the function of the skin based on the structures that are being highlighted upon. Now, class, we say that the skin is the largest body organ and at times it's due continuous to the body openings such as the nostrils. Very good. Again, the skin being the largest body organ is a very important structure to be discussed as such. Now, the skin is basically composed of two layers. You have the upper layer of the skin. I also have the lower layer of the skin. And that is the upper layer of the skin class is called the epidermis. And the lower layer of the skin is called the dermis. Again, which, what are the composed, what, are the com what is the composition of the epidermis? And what are the composition of the dermis? Let's look at that quickly. The composition of the epidermis, we have three layers. We have basically three layers. The first, the uppermost layer of the epidermis is called the conified layer. The middle layer is called the granular layer. And the innermost layer is called the malpigian layer. Now, let's look at each and every one. Which ones are the dead cells? Which one are the living? And which one are actively divided? Now, in the epidermis class, we said we have the conified layer. Now, we said the conified layer is made up of flattened dead cells. The conified layer is made up of flattened dead cells, which are filled with a tough, flexible substance called keratin. Now, being said that, what are some what are some of the ways through which the cells of the conified layer are lost? The cells of the conified layer are lost through friction. Now, when these cells are lost through friction, are they replaced? Yes. They are replaced by the dead cells of the granular layer. And therefore, this, that is briefly about the conified layer. Now let's look at what are some of the functions that do, does the conified layer play? One of the functions that the conified layer play is protection against mechanical damage. It also prevents entry of disease-causing microorganisms or rather pathogenic invasion. Number three, it prevents excessive loss of uh, water. Again, we say, what about the distribution or rather the uniformity of the, the uniformity of the thickness of the epidermis across the body? organs or rather across the body surface. Now, the thickness of this conified layer class is not uniform. It is thick in areas of high friction, e.g. the balms of the arms and the soles of the feet. Where friction is high, the epidermal, the, the, the conified layer is thick. But in areas with less friction, like the, 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 the eyeballs, they are very thin. Now, we are done with conified layer. Let's come to the granular layer. Now, the granular layer class is the middle layer of the epidermis. It is made up of living cells. Now, what happens when granular layer die? Dead granular, layer cells, of, dead granular cells, they give rise to the conified layer. And we know the conified layer is made up of flattened dead cells. Now, that side, let's go to the Malpigian layer again. What are the, where is the location? It is found in the innermost, the innermost layer of the epidermis. 
It is made up of actively dividing cells. And therefore, as such, they give rise to the epidermis. Again, they have an important pigment called the melanin. Now, what's the function of the melanin? Melanin basically serves two functions. Number one, it gives the, the, skin, the skin its color. Number two, it also protects the skin from harmful UV light from the sun. UV basically means the ultraviolet rays which are harmful to the skin are protected by the pigment produced at the innermost layer of the epidermis. That is the Malpighian layer which is actively dividing and that I would say it gives rise to the epidermis as well. Now let's go to the lower layer of the skin that is the dermis. Now class as you can see the dermis, what are some of the composition of the dermis? We have the blood vessels, we have the sweat glands, we have the hair follicles, we have the sepaceous gland, subcutaneous fat layer, as well we have the nerve endings as well. Now, let's look one by one. Blood vessels, as we know class, blood vessels. We have arteries, veins, and capillaries as well. Now, what is the essential thing for blood vessels to be uh, located in the skin? Now, basically we know the blood vessels, they bring oxygen and nutrients to the tissues and cells of the skin and will remove waste products such as carbon for oxide. And again, you're going to see that blood also takes part in temperature regulation of the skin. How? For instance, at high, when the temperatures are high, you're going to find that the blood vessels along the surface of the skin will, will vasodilate or rather they will increase in size or rather they will expand. And when they expand these blood vessels, a large volume of blood will pass near the skin surface in that blood uh, vessel. Now, meaning a lot of heat will be lost because a lot of uh, blood flowing through the skin means there is a lot of heat that will be lost as compared when there is a little volume of blood flowing near the skin surface. And therefore, that is how the blood is going to see when we are going to uh, the regulation of body temperature that as well. Now again, you have the sweat glands. Now the sweat glands, what are their function? They also take part in temperature regulation and also removal of excess water, urea, lactic acid, and we are going to see also sometimes it removes salts. Now let's go to the next one, the hair follicles. The hair follicles also takes part in temperature regulation subject to the relaxation and contraction of the erector pili muscle. The hair follicle regulates the body temperature depending on the relaxation and contraction of the erector pili muscles. We are going to see at high temperatures the erector pili muscles relaxing and therefore the angle of hair follicle lying flat on the skin surface trapping less air Therefore, there will be no insulation and a lot of it will be lost. As opposed to at low, body, at low temperature where the erector pili muscles contract and the angle of the hair follicle stands erect, trapping a layer of air which acts as insulation, hence, le hence little heat or no heat is lost. We're going to see deep when we are discussing the functions of the skin. Again, we have the sebaceous gland the sebaceous gland. Now the sebaceous gland, it produces, or rather it secretes, sebum. Now, what are the, the sebum plays two functions. Number one, it's, it keeps the hair and epidermis supple and waterproof. Function number two, it has some antiseptic substances that prevent attack for, by the microorganisms. Again, we have uh, the subcutaneous fat layer. Now the subcutaneous fat layer contains fats and basically it does two functions. The function is the one is it binds the skin to the muscle and other organs. It also does, it also acts as an insulation against heat loss. Very good. Now let's come to the functions of the skin. Protection of the underlying tissues from microorganisms damage UV rays from the sun. Now we have seen protection of the underlying tissue by, by microorganism invasion, mechanical damage, from where the conified layer of the epidermis does 
these two functions as well the, Seb the sebaceous gland also do some bit of the protection of the microorganisms as well what about the uv rays from the sun that function is primarily played by the malpighian layer by the malpighian layer which is found by the melanin of the malpighian layer found in the epidermis as under such is the innermost layer of the brevis now regulation of body temperature regulation of the body temperature is achieved in the skin by the following number one the erector pili muscles now the erector pili muscle and the angle of the hair follicle they work together the contraction and relaxation of the erector pili muscles determines the, 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 where the, the angle of the hair follicle will lie flat or will stand erect and from there, we are going to see. For instance, at high temperatures, the erector pili muscles relaxes. Now, when the erector pili muscles relaxes, the angle of hair follicle lies flat on the skin, trapping less or no air. Hence, there will be no insulation and more heat will be lost from the skin. Now, another one that plays and function is the sweat gland. At high temperatures, the sweat glands get activated. And when they get activated, they start secreting sweat. The sweat now will carry heat, excess water, traces of urea, lactic acid, like that. But the major role is removal of heat. And when, when that uh, sweat carries the latent heat of vaporization from the skin, it brings a cooling effect to the skin as well. Another thing that plays a role there, the sweat gland, the erector pili muscles, very good. Now, excretion of salt, excess water and traces of urea. We have seen that, that the sweat ducts and the sweat glands and the sweat pore collectively, the sweat duct carries, the sweat gland becomes activated, the sweat duct carries and the sweat pore is the exit way root to this thing. Now, last thing is reception of stimuli like heat. And that function is basically done by the nerves. You can see the nerve fiber, the nerve ending, also nerve free nerve ending. The nerves are basically involved in detection of stimuli. Now, synthesis of vitamin D as well, the storage of uh, fats. Now, primarily class, what I want us to look at is the temperature regulation. Now, for example, what, the, what, what are the receptors that detect when the temperature changes, when the external body temperature changes? The receptors that detect are the thermoreceptors. And when the thermoreceptors detect the external body temperature changes, what do they do? They send an impulse to the hypothalamus. And once the hypothalamus receives the impulse from the thermoreceptors, be, uh, regarding the external temperature changes, it also sends an impulse to the, uh, 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 to the, to the for example, to the, to the sweat glands, the erector pili muscles, or the involved organ, or uh, the involved uh, uh, parts of the skin, which are for temperature regulation. Now, that is briefly about the structure and the functions of the skin. And this question has been tested in KCSC several years, and you are supposed to master a very simple uh, question that you can score 20 marks. And again, to add on that, sometimes you can be told there was an increase, there was a high temperature changes in the environment, there was a temperature increment in an environment. So, please, uh, what are some of the changes that will occur to the skin structure? to restore the body temperatures back to normal the, uh, uh, when the temperatures of the environment get too high. Now you know what you are supposed to be discussing and for those. Now thank you very much and wish you all the best. And today I have decided my lecture into this. It was a very positive advice from a colleague of mine who is very much professional. On the other hand, I want, us, I want to share with you a critique I received on social media sometimes back. That, the last video I uploaded, 
There was a small mistake I did do, do, uh, as a result of the slip of the time, and somebody uh, regarding himself as a professional teacher, but because of a small statement that even does not reach 30 seconds, he said I was giving a misleading explanation. Now the question is, I understand we are a human being, right? I'm not I'll always be having errors, although I've, which are a minimal. But again, when you detect an error as a professional teacher, you should not be telling such things in public. You are supposed to directly look for me, then you tell me that this one is not supposed to be done this, and this one it is supposed to be like this. That's a very constructive critique. But again, if you just start uh, giving negative comments on social media of areas which are very minimal, sometimes can be ignored. I don't know the motive behind or rather the intention you are having, but as a colleague, I will encourage those professional colleagues who are making uh, a, a, a comment on these, my tutorials, please be professional. And to add on this, nobody is ever perfect. We are human beings subject to errors. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best.